Hello, my name is Kim Marchak um, and I'm here to talk about Hello Data and how this can help your school to track assessment information within your MIS and then reporting it using the latest Power BI uh, technology available to you. Um, what I'm going to do is start by showing you a PowerPoint um, and then from there we're going to dip into the actual software itself and show you all the benefits on there. So why use Hello Data? What is it? What's it about? OK, so the idea behind it is that it's a reporting tool that uses the Power BI uh, technology. But what it does is uses the data, the data direct from your MIS rather than you having to purchase a, a separate assessment package. This will allow you to really make the most of your MIS and the full capabilities within it, therefore making it more value for money. Um, it'll provide huge amount of um, flexibility for you so you can either use our ready-made resources within the MIS or you could use if you're already using mark sheets um, within sims integrity for example you can continue to use those and we'll connect it up with the reporting tool it's entirely up to you which way you go or we can help you to make your own um, resources that suit you the types of data that the reports um, will produce for you are attainment information, progress, both in year progress um, and key stage progress. You will also be able to review contextual reports. So how many children you've got in your school that are pupil premium, along with attendance information. So there's a huge array of different information available that is coming direct from your MIS. The types of reports that are available um, are for um, trusts. There are mat wide, so which compares schools by schools. There are um, whole school analysis available. So on one screen, you can see reception through to year six and how they're doing. Group analysis, um, there's lots of those available along with the national data, and there are also um, ability to see individual people data on there as well. It's particularly suited for primary schools um, as it tracks through from nursery through to year six currently. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is actually take you into Sims as an example of what the ready made resources might look like. We do have different options, so I'm just going to show you one option in there and then I'll move straight on into the reporting side of things so that you can see how this can work for you and your school. So if we just move into Sims now, so this is an example of one of our ready made mark book sheets in Sims. Um, this one is a, a really popular grade structure these days to simplify assessment and, and save teachers a huge amount of time in inputting data. So all of our resources um, automatically pull the children's names through because they're already in your SIMS database. They will automatically show the previous um, statutory data. So here I've got their early years information and a calculation that shows whether they achieved a good level of development or not. Um, if I had any statutory key stage one data for these children, it would be shown in these columns. But I also have the option of entering my own internal end of year two teacher assessment data as well. Uh, that proved very important through the COVID years where we've got two years worth of missing key stage data. So it enables schools to sort of put that starting point, that baseline in for children. Um, also, when children join midway through uh, the, the school, you can actually baseline those children rather than relying on perhaps statutory data that hasn't come from the feeder school. Uh, you can then record assessment data um, in this example four times. So there's um, an entry autumn, spring and summer on here. Um, and it also shows end of previous year on there as well. So in this particular structure, we've gone really simple. Um, we've just gone with for four grades. So we've got expected greater depth and then below that we've got working towards and below. The idea behind that is about what the children are on track for rather than worrying about are they moving through steps of progress this is all about what are they on track for so let's just really identify the children quickly as to who's not on track and i can use all the usual fil filters that are available within sims or the mis that you're using to drill into this data more the progress in this instance we've decided to simplify that so it's all about whether they've gained or not from the previous year and the previous key stage so what I can very quickly do is say, well, let's sort this column and I just want to see the, how the children have done across the key stage. So the, the yellow children here have gone backwards across the key stage. So compared to their year two data, these children have maintained and we might have some that have gone above. There we go. So they've actually gained from the previous key stage. So really quickly, I can just drill into that data. Um, within the mark sheets, as I'm sure you're aware in Sims, you can also put contextual columns on to show who the children are. So, for example, date of birth, gender, uh, pupil premium 
uh, percentage attendance is a popular one. So let's pop that on there. So then we have some leading columns here. So you can see some really key information. All the resources also allow you to enter test result um, and a full comment at the end, which is great for end of year reports or end of term reports, depending on how your school does it. Now that's an example of just one mark sheet that is available as part of the standard option. But as I've previously said, you can actually have made whatever you want within the system. Uh, we do also provide other value added resources. Um, so I'm just going to quickly search for another one, an idea of the sorts of things that are available. So um, we've just released here a key stage progress um, indicator mark sheet. So what this does is it takes your current year six children. It works out what they got at key stage one. It then compares that to the national averages last year. It then looks at their current scale score that you've entered into the system. So here we've got term four information here. And then if I click on calculate, what it will then do is it will then work out the actual progress score of the child based on last year's national um, scale, average scale scores. So you can very quickly see which children have progressed or not based on their key stage one data and their current scale scores. So it's a really good indicator there. You can also get the uh, an indicator of the score progress score just by clicking on the summary button. And so down here, I can see what my my current, um, I suppose, school average progress scores are there. So that also comes as standard. There are lots of other resources within the within the MIS which will enable you to interrogate your data more easily and different options available. Um, so that's all very well and good. And it's great because what this does is allows teachers to really quickly enter their data and not be agonising over, well, have they made two steps, three steps and so on. But it's actually the reporting where the time is saved, um, particularly for um, uh, senior leaders. So if I just go through to my reporting tool, so the data, um, as I said, is entered into your MIS and then it is then analysed through this Power BI reporting tool. So we're on the first page here um, and there are lots of different reports. They all run along the bottom and you can scroll across and there are even more there. So the different ways of slicing and dicing the data, the data pretend, um, depending on what you're interested in seeing there. So the way this works is the first report here shows me year one to year six data and it shows me the percentage of children that are expected working towards below greater depth. And the whole thing is really interactive. So if I want to, to check on this 23% in year four and who they are, I can just click on that figure. And what it will then do is filter this pupil name list down for me. So straight away I can see who was in that 23%. And if I scroll across, it'll then tell me, are they pupil premium, SEN and EAL? And I can export these tables really quickly into Excel. Just click in a white space and everybody will come back again. I can take that analysis a step further so I can say, well, actually, I'd quite like to see who all the children are that are below in the school. So click on below. So I've just clicked on a title there. It's going to filter that list again. And those are my below children. It's a really quick way of drilling into that information. Now, that's just the first thing it will do on the first report. We can also very quickly use our filters. So if I click on a filter button up here, if I'm a trust of schools, I can choose which school I want to be viewing here. So it's very quick to do that. I can change to, to view it by classes, change the term, the subject, and I've also got an admission filter. So this enables me to just look at the children that have been with me since a certain time period. So maybe since key stage one, since beginning of reception, or maybe only joined within the last two years. That is fantastic for pupil mobility. Okay. The other option you have up here is a second filter button. This enables me to filter my reports by group. So I can very quickly say, well, I'm just interested in my people premium children. So hopefully what you saw there is the reports here have now changed. So I'm just now looking at all my people premium children there. And you can do multiple groups. So you could do people premium who are boys, for example. It's, everything's just a single click within here. The other thing you might have noticed here is um, within your MIS, you can create custom groups. Um, and as long as you prefix the name of them with HD, those groups will come in to these reports, which means that I can very easily monitor any interventions, any vulnerable children that are specific to my school, 
Um, it's a fantastic way of just looking for those groups. We also have some schools that have designated support units and they want to just track the children within that support unit setting. So that works really well as well. I'm just going to take that filter off. So that's kind of in a nutshell how the interaction works, how easy it is to use it. But we have all sorts of different reports available, as I've intimated earlier. If I move across, um, one of the favourite ones is Whole School on Track. So what this does is it shows me reception data at the top here. Percentages that are on track for reading, writing, maths combined, both expected and greater depth. And then it breaks it into the three subjects. So I've got all of my year groups on there. I've also got a, an attendance update there as well, along with the pupils actual data down here. So I can actually see the individuals at all times. Now, what this page does that the other one didn't is I can also change the view. So I can click on this little stacker icon. And it just rotates round so I can just see the, the figures as a table rather than charts. And rotate again and I get the count of students. So how many children are on track and not on track? And back again takes me to my charts. All of this is a single click of a button. I've still got my filters, so I can still filter this by certain groups or I can get it to do the hard work for me. So I can click on on track, which is my next dashboard along. The on track dashboard defaults to year one, so you choose whichever year group or class you want. And what this does is provides, if I just zoom up just a little bit, so you can see a little bit clearer. Okay. What this does is provides a group analysis here of the percentage of children that are on track for expected and above in reading, writing, maths and the combined. And I can see my boy and girl comparison there. So I'll be looking at writing girls is very low compared to the boys there. Um, it's got all sorts of groups on there. You can choose which groups are on display, um, but this is the full set here. The other thing that this page does for you is compares your data against the latest national data that's available. So it'd be either the, depending on which year group you've got chosen, it will either be the Key Stage 1 data or the Key Stage 2 data. So if I point at this dark blue line, it then tells me what the national figure was there. So that's on track for expect and above, and that's on track for greater depth. What I also have here is a list of people's names with ticks showing me if they're on track in the subject and across if they're not. This one's fabulous for progress meetings with your teachers, because if I click on my filter, I can then say just show me anyone that's not on track. This then shows me all the children that aren't on track and in which subjects they're not. So Amelia, for example, is only not on track in maths. Ellie only not on track in writing. In fact, we've got quite a few that it's just writing they're missing. So it enables the teachers to focus on those that perhaps might be the quicker wins. Um, you can search for individual pupils on this page as well. Other varieties we have, um, we have something called cohort analysis. So what this does is tracks a group of children through the school. So I'm going to actually just change this one to year six. Over here. And this will show me a little bit more data because it defaults to year one. So within here, I've got reading up at the top, then writing, then maths, and it shows me for the year six children what percentages achieved expected and above or greater depth all the way through the school. So what looking at when they're at the end of year one, two, three, four, five, and then the current year six here. Again, that's really useful for progress meetings. I can search for individual pupils here, or I could rotate the view to get to the individual data. So this will take me to the percentages. This will show the counts. If I go one more time, this actually shows me the children's names coming through now. So I can actually see how the children have gone. So Nancy has been expected all the way through. Xander has been below for some of the years, then went to greater depth, then to below, and has gone back up to greater depth. So it's a really good way of viewing that journey through the school. Other really good examples include trend analysis. So this enables me to see year on year how has a group of children done. So year six is over the last uh, one, two, four years. How has the school done with the year sixes over the four years? And you can change which year group on which term. Down at the bottom, it then I can then choose to see groups and how they've progressed. So here I've got the national figure and then I've got my boys and my girls, but I can easily just show people premium or so forth on there. 
We often get asked about progress. Um, we offer lots of different varieties for progress. So this trend analysis shows progress in one way, but we have steps of progress, which shows you how they've moved from one year to the next. We have average progress, along with average attainment actually, but we also have key stage progress. So if I come to key stage progress, this one is fabulous for monitoring the children's journey from one key stage to another. Um, so I'm going to come down to year six. So here I've got year six data here. OK, and it's set to read at the moment, but that can be changed. So what this grid does is these are the key stage one levels. So everybody in this EXS row got, key, got EXS at key stage one. And then this is the grade that they're at now. So I can say that of all the children that were expected at key stage one, five are now working towards, seven are expected and five are greater depth. And you can either click on those figures to reveal who the children are over on the right, or you can click on the little Cluedo man. I click on the Cluedo man. This then tells me that these children in this box here were expected at key stage one, but they're now only working towards. So expected and they're now working towards. So these are the children I need to focus on. In the same way that this child here was greater depth at key stage one and they're now only expected. So it's a really good view um, to have those conversations with the teachers or senior leadership team. Um, we've got all sorts of other dashboards, um, but for the um, time's sake, I'm not going to go into each one. I'll just very quickly show you a couple of flavours of others. Um, EYFS, we have various things. So we have reception on track here. So what this does for me, it shows me the percentage of children that are on track for GLD and the percentage of that are on track in each of these 17 areas, if that's what you record against. I can easily filter these tables and expand on them. So not on track will just leave the children that aren't on track, which then gets rid of all the other children. Makes it easier to see and I can expand this by going into a focus mode. Um, th this data also shows for progress for early years and also includes the nursery as well in here. We also have foundation subjects available. So you can very quickly review all of your foundation subjects within here. Um, so let me just see if I can get. Change my school. I can get some data from a different school. There we go. So these are the foundation subjects you'll see in here. So it does two things. Um, so those are the list of my foundation subjects there. That's it by year group. So it's all subjects at the moment. So if I clicked on art and design over here on the left, that's my art and design in my school for years one to six. So I can see where the strengths and weaknesses are. Equally, I can do that in reverse. So um, I can say, well, actually, I'm just interested in the year six children. So I click on year six and it will then show me their data over here by subject, along with the information down here. So hopefully you can see it's actually really easy to use. The last page I just wanted to quickly touch upon was the summary page. This isn't so much about um, assessment data, but what it's really useful for is for governor reports, because what this enables you to do is see how many children in each of my groups I've got across the school. So all pupil premium, you can see how many children I've got. And if I click on that all pupil premium group, it'll then tell me who the children are and also provide a distribution chart for me. Among many other things. Um, in terms of what's available, I, I briefly mentioned right at the beginning about uh, match reports and governor reports. So we have a governor report that looks identical, except for it doesn't show people's names and it's up to you who you give access to that. We also have a multi school report and the idea of the multi school report is that it compares the schools alongside each other. So if you're a group of schools or a trust, then you can actually see that comparison and get mat whole um, whole mat figures as well. Um, so I'm just letting this load as we speak now. The permissions are completely in your control as to which members of staff or external governors or whatever can see what. So uh, that's something that each school sets up for themselves and the trust. So you can see here I've got my schools here and it's telling me how many people premium and so on I've got there. I've got it as a chart and I can very easily just see the groups that I want rather than all of these groups that we've got set there. And then I have um, assessment information in these charts and on the bottom, so other reports. So this one has got showing me a national data um, for all my schools and a whole trust figure and the percentage on track for GLD. Some charts around the other way, depending on what it's trying to show. 
And again, I've got my rotation view here, which enables me to compare my scores alongside each other. Um, the, the reports work in exactly the same way. They're just showing slightly different data. I right, now flip back to my presentation. I'm just going to finish just by summing up the things that we've covered here. Um, so I just click on there. So what this offers you is time savings. So it's not only time saving for the um, SLT reporting on the data um, and um, for governors and so on, but it's also for the teachers in terms of data input. The mark sheets are very, very easy to put the data in, um, in the way that they've been laid out. All the information is in one place rather than scattered across different mark sheets. The analysis is interactive, so rather than a static PDF report, it enables you to dr drill down into the bits that are important to you um, and enables you to interrogate it at greater depth um, based on your school and trust. It provides flexibility and the reason I say that is because the um, data entry can be done your way. You don't have to use our ready made resources. Uh, they can be made to suit your requirements. All of this leads to cost effectiveness, um, so you can kind of combine the time saving and cost effectiveness. Um, so you're utilising fully the MIS. Often people spend a lot of money on their MISs, but they can't actually use all of the features within there and then end up having to buy extra packages and so on. Um, the, the cost of Hello Data is considerably cheaper than most assessment packages out there. Um, so it's more seen as a bolt on because it's using the data directly from the MIS rather than having to type it in somewhere else. So if um, that's sort of the end of the, this particular presentation, if you want to see more examples on the website of some of the reports, um, there's our website address there. Um, and if you would like a actual demonstration for your trust or school or just to learn a little bit more, including pricing and so on, um, please do um, email us at inquiries at hello-data.co.uk and we'd be more than happy to provide a demonstration or have a conversation with you that's specific to your needs. Many thanks for listening.